Hello and welcome to a Smurd P video and today we are looking at X-Men. I feel like we're looking at X-Men issue. What issue are we on? Oh, that's just embarrassing. That is the first start off. A good review, not knowing what issue you are on. I'm pretty sure I'm on issue 8 anyway. First of all, we have Dalton's, uh trading card homage to Jim Lee's back in the 1990, early 90s, very early 90s. And we have Cinch, uh, a character that I feel like a lot of people actually really like this character from Generation X. But for me, I don't know. Everett hasn't really been that interesting. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just talking rubbish here. I'm probably upsetting a lot of you that do like Cinch. But um, the, the cover is quite cool anyway. And anyway, he's part of this X-Men team. So I am happy with him being on this team. I just, I, I feel like he just draws off lots of powers and, you know, but he does think really cool in this issue. So in terms of this issue, I'm not sure if I'm impressed or actually a little bit peeved and disappointed. Um, so in terms of the issue, it, it feels like there's a lot around Cyclops and it all seems very, very convenient. So in issue seven, you would have, if you've watched my review, you would have heard me very puzzled because there were, it was like, have I missed an issue? I'm not sure what's going on here. But all of a sudden, uh, Yurik has forgotten who, all about Cyclops, miraculously. And he's a goal, I guess, to release and expose that story. And um, Cyclops is... Masculine as Captain Krakon. It was a bit bizarre, non the list. Um, however, in this issue, we find out what happens. So, Dr. Stasis from Orchids is going to release lots of creatures. He's become Animal Man. So he is going to release these creatures and he's given some, them some magical wine and... Yeah, they're just going to tear up New York, which is um, stuff that villains do, I guess. They, they go and do that. And no, this is issue seven. I am very embarrassed. Issue number seven, people, not number eight. Do you know why I think it's number eight? Because number eight is on its way to me. So I'm looking forward to reading that. Um, anyway, this is how it happens. The Secret Origin of Captain... Crackle by Jerry Dugan. Jerry is, uh, I'm very fond of Jerry's work up until now. I'm very fond of his work. I don't know, there's just bits of this issue that I, I just bug me. I'll get into that in a minute. So Pepe is on the artist. Uh, Mate is the color artist. Clayton Cowles is on the letter. He's been on there for a while. And Tom Muller is still on design. So we get this um, White Queen um, helping with Cyclops coming back. So this is the aftermath. So it jumps forward and says, hey, um, you can't just go out there to, to your team. Um, you died quite publicly. So um, it's not going to happen. Um, all Cyclops wants to do is get back to his X-Men though. So, um, and apparently there is another emergency going on with uh, Mr. Carnation. But, um, so, back in New York earlier, so the X-Men are conveniently short-handed with uh, Rogue and Jean elsewhere. And if I remember correctly, that's because they split them off. So it was designed very smartly, I'm going to say, that Rogue, Polaris, and Jean were elsewhere. So that leaves uh, Sunfire, Wolverine, Cyclops, and Cinch to go take out these, um, these um, rabid uh, animals. That's what I'm going to call them. Or wind-up animals. And Cyclops lets off. He, you know, he's doing his eye beam thing quite quickly, taking out multiple creatures all at the same time showing why he is the first X-Men 
And you all know I'm a big Psycho fan, so you know I'm probably quite excited about that. And then, um, you know, since says, you know, he, he thought that um, Cyclops was a bit full of himself, um, but then you, you go and do stuff like that. And Cyclops quite arrogantly says, I am the X-Men, which is very true, you know, very true. And, and I think a lot of long-time comic fans do agree with statements like that. Cyclops is the X-Men. This man would have sacrificed everything, sometimes a little bit too much at time. So in, in some ways, and this is why I probably identify with him quite a lot, and, and the same with Peter Parker as Spider-Man. They are willing to do everything for either the protection of people or protection of their mutant kinds. Um, I guess Cyclops, over the years, I've said this numerous times, there was a line that he was crossing at one point, a very dark line to protect his people, where perhaps he went a bit too far. But he does it because this is his family. This isn't just about X-Men. This is his family. This is what he thinks of these people. And that's what he's trying to do now. But he's also trying to create that dream of Charles Xavier of humans and mutants coexisting. He still, he still believes in this dream. Even if Professor Xavier has almost moved on from that. Um, so I thought, so I feel like that's quite a, an interesting thing to talk about anyway. So we've got, um, no more developments with Cinch and Laura, which I feel that story's kind of gone a bit dry. Um, I hope that does get picked up anyway. And we also get a, a little moment with, um, where he says, you should have killed it to the creature, which he scares her. And she says, um, well, how about you do your own killing? You know what I mean? Because if I do it, you're going to brand me. You can see it now. You're going to brand me or something. So anyway, this is not going to Dr. Stasis' plan. So he sends out the big gun, the big Huda, the tiger, etc. But he's also playing a strategy game here. This strategy game, and I also wanted to point out, that looks like Kraken's helmet there as well. Captain Kraken's helmet there. So I feel, I feel like that's pretty bizarre. Um, so his strategy is, if they blow up, if some fire blows up one of these creatures, it creates a bigger fire bomb, taking out some fire and putting out a lot of people at risk. So he's creating in this strategy, he's creating this divide between the the X Men, and um, Everett comes in to save the day, but he also uses. Why she was not there, Jean's telekineticus. Damn it, I can say it then. Um, he does that, but that takes him out. So in one swoop, maybe not by design, Sunfire is out of action. Everett is out of action. Leaving um, Wolverine somewhere and Cyclops trying to save the baby from the tiger. And you know what Cyclops is going to do? He's going to save the baby. However, he gets ripped in the back. Now, my, my thing with this is Cyclops is a great strategist. And no, he doesn't get every battle right. I'm not saying that. But I feel like this was all too convenient and a little bit easy of how this came about. And where on earth is Laura, etc.? At this point in time, probably find other monsters. I, I guess the distractions there, but I also feel like him being called out like this, even while saving a baby, seems a little bit easy. So, I feel like I'm not sure if it's because they. Mutants have become relaxed about dying. They're not fussed if they lose. That they don't even try to stay alive now. Because they think if I die, it doesn't matter. It's done. I'm going to be resurrected. Which is far too easy. And they've made it even more easier with um, the recent... Um, what's it? Magneto's trial storyline. they made it even more easier. So I feel like they've made it really easy. 
But I also don't know if it felt too easy that Cyclops has been caught out like this. And obviously, uh, maybe this is Dr. Stasis' plan. I felt like it was his plan to out Cyclops or take Cyclops out of the game because now he does. You, you think that's just a medic? It's not a medic. It's a dude who comes over and he takes out the, the cutlery ar artery that uh, actually kills him. So Cyclops is dead. Um, so it's either a great strategy from Dutch Stairs, but I feel like, what is he getting out of this? I felt like when he was perhaps in cahoots with Uric, he was um, getting this story out to expose mutants, and he was going to get sank out of it. But this is taken in a whole different direction, a direction that I'm not too sure on what Jerry's trying to achieve here. But there's um, some other stuff going in the background as well with the the casino in space as well so there's lots of hidden agendas and i don't expect to find out what these hidden agendas are in seven issues but i felt like cyclops's death was either very well planned by another master strategist but it just felt too easy getting killed by a giant tiger do you know what i mean it feels a bit weak if you're gonna kill cyclops Maybe a little bit better. Well, actually saying that, the tiger doesn't actually kill him. That's status does. So that bit's quite serious. I do enjoy that bit. I felt like that was quite... Oh, he, he could be okay. The medic's there, and then um, the medic does him in. It's, it's, you know, that's classic. Classic TV and stuff like that. I, I thought very, very clever. But the other bits, maybe just a bit convenient. But hey, it is what it is. I do... I do I'm still liking this run. I'm not opposed to it at all. And then quite simply, Cyclops becomes Dr. Kraken because, well, they made this body armor to protect them and stuff. Forge's design. Um, so that's how... Dr. So it's not really an origin of Dr. Kraken. It's, well, how did Cyclops get into this position where he has to take on an alternative persona? So I feel like it's all... It's all good. But Hugh has raised Eric's mind. It's not Jean Grey. We suspect it's perhaps Emma Frost, maybe. Would make sense. Would make sense at all. And then we got Dot Stairs, who has taken Cyclops' little clothes that he was wearing last issue. And he's just staring over it with his little creatures there. And um, anyway, somebody's playing with them. That's what this issue is determined somebody's messing around with them and they've been messing around with them for a while and if it's not this dude it's um the dude that's on mars right now or it's or chis or it is the the space casino so there is lots of things that dugan is doing very well here so i'm liking it. I'm, I'm i'm liking the fact that the x-men are on the fence i feel like as well i do i am actually liking it because they have become it's too easy for them. So I like them second guessing. They've already had to make an adjustment in this team, which takes out one of their their stronger strategist members, etc., from using his Arctic Blast, which is his natural power. He's gonna to pretend to do all this other stuff. So um Cyclops is pissed. I like it. So an interesting issue, very well done. Um, but also it's a thing I'm, I don't like. Uh, there's a medical report as well about Cynthia's mutant uh, gifts and the uh, communication about Corner Station of Evolution. And they've also got the Secret Council to contend with as well. So Cyclops is up against it. He's got these, these plenty of bad guys. He also has uh, his own people to contend with and convince that he is this X team or the right way forward. And they're at and in the last issue they were saying no to Captain Crack on being on that team. We know we now know why that all makes sense. So yeah, issue seven. There we go, Jenny. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts on this. Um, thank you uh, all for um, watching. I really do appreciate uh, your support. If you haven't subscribed, really appreciate you subscribing. Thank you for watching. Take care of yourselves and embrace geekiness. Goodbye, folks. Oh.